All right, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are having a good time here in Singapore. Okay, this is also, um, I think, Casual Connect in Asia. This is our third time being here. And I thank the organizers for having us here again to speak. All right, today I'll be sharing with all of you the analysis of the Asian mobile market and what it takes to succeed on Android. All right? Now, before I begin, can I have a show of hands of how many game developers on Android is on the floor? Very good. And how many of the game developers on iOS? About the same. Okay, great. Okay, just a very brief introduction of myself. My name is Choi Wai Chong. You can call me Choi. And I was born and bred in Malaysia, and I went to Japan for 15 years before moving to Singapore two and a half years ago to start up the Meetup Singapore uh, in Singapore. And uh, I'm heading the team here in Singapore and also overlooking the operations in North America and Europe. Now, uh, without much further ado, let us start by having a comparative look at the Asian game, mobile gaming market. So, we see that the Android market share of downloaded apps, okay, is increasing rapidly, and it's, it is now one and a half times more than that of iOS. However, for the iOS revenue, it is like about uh, close to twice as much, or maybe 1.67 times as much as Android. But this has narrowed down from more than 10 times in the last three years, okay? Three years ago, iOS used to be like more than 10 times the revenue of Android, but now it's like just 60% or 70% more. And the huge increase of the download market is actually due to the sharp increase of the Android devices around the globe. So if we look closer into the major countries in Asia, where device makers are born, we could see that in Korea, China, and Taiwan, it is really dominated by the Android devices. So players like Samsung, LG, Xiaomi, Huawei, ZTE, HTC, etc., they play a big role in this explosive growth. Next, um, based on the recent study by App Annie, I think Junde you covered that as well. So US took back its number two spot in terms of revenue by countries, and this is the monthly revenue uh, by countries, took back the second spot from Korea. But we have Japan still staying very strong at number one, and then Korea is now number three. Taiwan, which used to be not even in the, in the list at all a year ago, it is now number six. And for your information, last year, at this time around February or March, so Google Play started off the top grossing category, okay, after solving some issues with the Taiwanese government, and they are now in top six. Hong Kong is actually top nine, top eight now in Asia, and that makes four countries in Asia being in the top 10 top revenue generating countries globally. In terms of downloads by countries, in terms of the downloaded market share, we have US improving to, <coughs> I mean Brazil and Russia, so we have the BRIC countries, okay? BRIC countries being the Brazil, Russia, India, and China. The reason why China is not on the list here is because in China there's no Google Play, but they have all these third-party Android stores. Now, we talk about Japan, Korea, Taiwan, all being in top revenue generating countries, right? So, but exactly how much is that, all right? Japan, for example, if, if we take Japan, for example, it used to be like a million dollar per month if you're in top five, top grossing two years ago. But now if you see it has grown multiple times, okay? And right now, if you're earning like $100,000 a month, you won't even be in top 100, top grossing in Japan. And Korea and Taiwan, they are also picking up very fast with a potential lucrative revenue of more than $10 million a month. It's possible to get there. This goes to show that the myth about being able to only make money on iOS is not true. So the markets are also certainly getting more competitive as we go. Um, to get into the top new free has never been harder. The growth of the download market share based on the Android devices also contributed to this. So right now, this is a comparison between a year ago and now. You can see in Japan, Korea, and Taiwan, number of downloads needed for the boost campaign to get into the top new free rankings. Now, as mentioned earlier, I'll be talking about the Android market in Asia. So I would like to talk about the top four Asian markets, namely Japan, Korea, China, and Taiwan. So let's start with Japan, being the number one top revenue generating country in the world. So recently, we see that there's an emergence 
of global mega hits, titles in Japan charts, okay? So the emergence of Clash of Clans, Heyday from Supercell, and then you have like Candy Crush Saga from King, you have Castle Clash from IGG, you have the Megapolis from Social Quantum, and also recently with the, with the movie Frozen, so we have the Frozen Freefall coming into Japan as well. And then we also see a trend of the giant app developers who were once a traffic, traffic engine, now moving to the monetizing engine. And these are the likes of Line and Kodopla in Japan. Now we talked about global apps succeeding in Japan recently. And we also, see, we also start to see more and more Japanese developers pursuing and achieving more success outside of Japan. And this is, I'll give you a few examples of like Brave Frontier from Gumi, and then you have Puzzle and Dragons from Kang Ho, and Monster Strike from Mixi. Other than the PC online games com coming into mobile, we also see more and more success from the traditional console gamings with long established IPs. A few examples would be like Bandai Namco, Konami, etc. While we hear a lot of success stories, there are also many failures, okay? Uh, with every success story, you could have a lot of failures coming together with it, and that's if you don't have the right marketing strategy and also the production in place. Next, what we see as another trend is in the top grossing categories, the light casual games are slowly replacing the hardcore games, okay? And this is not just limited to Japan. Uh, it is the same for US and South Korea as well, and maybe other parts of the world. So the graph shows the comparison of the current situation versus a year and a half ago. So what does that mean? The change of that trend it shows that the high ARPU, low DAU apps are slowly now replaced by the high DAU and low ARPU apps, okay? So some examples of the high ARPU, low DAU apps for the hardcore games would be like card battle, RPG, etc. while for the light casual games are like casual and puzzle games. Next, we move to Korea. So, Kakao is definitely a very great force to reckon with in Korea, and it dominates at least 70% okay, of the top 10 top grossing games. That means if you're an app that's like in the top grossing games in Korea, in top 10, very likely you'll be integrated already with Kakao platform, unless the game is of very, very good quality, all right? And in Korea, RPG games, strategy games are very popular and they are very mainstream right now. One more thing is due to the cross-promotion of major publishers in Korea and the social graph of Kakao, there's a tremendous increase in download traffic. And this plays a role in making it more competitive to get into the top rankings in Korea. So we talk about mid-core games must have, one more thing is like, totally necessary to have like very good easy interface or UI for mid-core games to assist light users, like the auto hunt mode in RPG. And also for Korea, being a country where English is not widely spoken, it is very important to have a localized customer service. And recently, Google Korea also stopped granting features for Kakao games. That means if you're on Kakao platform, you will not be featured on the Google Korea. Last but not least, unlike in Japan and Taiwan, Thailand, etc., Line is not line does not have a very strong presence in Korea. If we look at China, now we all know that, China, that Google Play does not exist in China, right? So it is said to have like third-party app stores and, uh, and etc. So who are they, right? Who are these app stores and all? There are four types of app store channels in mainland China. The game platformers, third-party markets, device makers with pre-installed game portals, and last but not least, the carrier app stores. So how do we break into the China market? China has a very different marketing strategy due to the non-existence of Google Play. It, it lacks the transparency in marketing strategy, but it also makes it possible to sort of buy yourself into the top spots, okay, in the top rankings of the app stores. Now, instead of having a clear al algorithm like in Google Play, clear algorithm on how to get to the top of it. And one more thing is it's a very common practice to give your source codes to local partners in China and have them run the marketing stints, et cetera, for you. 
And usually, what's a com another common practice for the Chinese uh, to be to be suc successful in Chinese is also they start off with the iOS version, and then they start to have gaining confidence in it, and then in the quality of the game, and move on to Android. Recently, there's been some successful developers moving into, sorry, moving into China, namely like Gumi, Brave Frontier, Square Enix, and Colopla. The fourth one I'm talking talking about would be Taiwan, and I'm putting in Hong Kong as a throw-in. There's a reason why I'm actually linking the both together, because there's not just one similarity, there are more than one similarity be between the two. One of the reasons is this, the written language in Taiwan and Hong Kong, they're both traditional Chinese. So that means it's easier for the marketing efforts. Whenever people do some marketing efforts, they are ma usually made together for these two countries, okay? And we see a huge similarity in the charts for both countries as well. Secondly, Line's presence in Taiwan is just impressive. So uh, Line has more than 20 million registered users in both Taiwan and Hong Kong. And this represents more than 70% of the population, for your information. And then one more other thing to note here for the, for the Taiwan Google Play is there are more and more localized apps, okay, localized titles in the top rankings. So basically, in order to penetrate into the Taiwanese market, it is better to have your app localized as well, compared to a year before. Next, um, I'll be talking a little bit about the common practices, about how to succeed on Google Android, okay? So Metap, at Metaps, we have helped hundreds of apps getting into the top rankings, and then they get the organic users, etc., and then further monetization. So what's the common practice? So the first thing to do will running the burst campaign within the first 30 days upon the launch of the new app. Why is it the first 30 days? Because in Google Play, we have the top new free category. And it is very important to get into this category so that we can get the maximum exposure to get as many organic downloads as possible. And then after the first month, where we no longer appear in the top new free category, and then we continue to acquire active users. And when I say active users here, I'm gonna give you some case studies on why it's important to acquire active users. So with gate contents, we have seen that apps actually can stay for more than a month in the top new free rankings as well. Now one more thing that is, we see a similarity in the growth graph in top new free versus top crossing, okay? It's very similar graph, okay? When you're in top new free, chances are you have a good chance to get into top browsing because there's a lot of organic downloads that come in that can help in, in creating that revenue for you in top browsing. This is an epic or, I mean, a very uh, typical failure case. So when we talked about acquiring active users, so we have like um, on a point network. When, when I mention a point network here, it means like points giving out virtual currencies to be exchanged to real goods, to real cash, okay? Those are point networks. And there was a campaign running $80,000, uh, 18,000 downloads on a point network. And soon after the, the campaign stopped, the ranking just plunged down due to lack of active users. Whereas on another case where we have 50,000 download campaign and it actually stayed at the top 30 and top 20, all right, for a longer time because of the active users acquired. And this is from a game network, because game users tend to have, on the average, they can play like about five games at any single time. So everyone's talking about Android in Asia being a black box, like whether they have a lot of questions, is there ROI, where is the money, how to spend, etc. who can I partner with and all. But there really isn't any black box if we understand deeply about what it takes and how to get there. Okay, to get the organic users to run the boost campaign and how many downloads it takes, etc. Okay, just need to know what it takes and how to get there. That would be the two most important questions to, to be asking. Then last but not least, I'll have a very short introduction of the company. Um, we are headquartered in Japan. We have uh, eight offices worldwide now, including Singapore, San Francisco, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Seoul, Lon and London. Okay, we have uh, more than 80 employees worldwide. We finished the Series A and Series B fundings last year, okay? Total of 16.5 million from Fidelity, mostly. And then also, earlier this year, we had a press release of the network apps totaling of over 1 billion downloads on our network, on our, our SDKs. And these are just some of the 
example partners that we're working with one way or another. And for the monetization tool, we have these three products, I mean, namely the offer board, which is actually an offer wall to help engage and also to activate the non-paying users. It's very suitable for the top crossing apps. And then we have two other products, which is the direct app. It's a 100% revenue share for CPCs. And for Exchanger, it's, it's actually free cross promotion. And you can, also, you can also have a free A-B testing if you're doing any icon optimization. OK, we are also at the silver sponsor booth at 407. So please feel free to come by, and we can talk more about your apps. Okay, Pepe. Perfect. Thank you, Thank you so Thanks much, Joy.